Starting a business has never been easier or more affordable than it is today. And I should know, I've started and built two seven-figure-a-year businesses with just a laptop and less than $50. But over the last five years and coaching over 3,000 clients in their entrepreneurial journey, I've seen firsthand how overwhelmed people get. There's so many things they feel like they're supposed to do in the early days, weeks, and months. And so they get caught up in things like building out their website and perfecting it, or should I print beautiful business cards, or do I need to file an LLC? And the answer to those questions is no, no, and no. There's something way more important you should be doing in your first 30 days of business. And that's what I want to break down in today's episode. If you are my client, here's what I would coach you to think through in your first 30 days. Let's discuss. Welcome to episode 182 of The Graham Cochran Show, where I'm here to help you build your online business, work less, and live and give more. I'm your host, Graham Cochran. Who else? That'd be weird if I had a different name on the Graham Cochran Show. Pumped to hang out with you today. Uh, This will be a great episode if you are beginning a new business or as we're getting to the end of the year here and you're thinking about the new year, thinking about how to reimagine or evolve your business going forward. A lot of you have started, maybe your business isn't where you want it to be. So, While I'll be talking about what to think about in the first 30 days, really what I'm talking about in today's episode are four things you need to consider at any point of your journey before you do anything else because they affect everything else and they're so, so critical. So lean in for this episode, even if you are in the middle of your online business journey. I also want to give you a practical resource. If you literally need to make money in the next 30 days and you need a kickstart in your online business, well, I've got a 30-day plan for you. It's my 30-day online income jumpstart guide. And all it is, my friend, is a bullet point checklist of what to do over the next four weeks. You can literally follow it beat by beat, and you can be launching something in 30 days that makes you money. Won't be a ton of money, but it will be money in your pocket, proof of concept, and then you can start off the new year right building out your business based off of what you just built in this first 30 days. It's a free guide. Just go to grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart. And if you're watching on YouTube, you know, friend, I'm going to link to it below this video so you can just click on it and get your copy. grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart. So what I want to do in today's episode is coach you through four things to think about when starting your online business. Or again, pivoting, restarting, or if you've plateaued, these things might be why. The first thing we need to talk about is you got to understand the difference between efficiency and effectiveness. So out of the gate, one thing I just want to get clear is that productivity in your business is not the goal. I love productivity as much as the next guy, but I think we are um, obsessed with productivity, getting things done. Getting things done is never the goal in life. Getting the right things done is the goal. And it is all too easy to do a lot of things, especially in the online business world, and never actually accomplish anything. So there's two things to think about. One, if you're coming from the employee world, you've worked for somebody else, you might be used to the way things were there in that culture, which they value output. How many sales calls are you making? Uh, How many meetings did you have or manage? How busy do you look at your desk with that Excel spreadsheet open? It's just, they value butts and seats and activity and output because it feels like everybody's doing something and they better be doing something because they're getting paid and the managers want to know that their people are outputting. But blind output is not the goal. Effectiveness is. So this is true at the beginning, and this is especially true when your business is growing. But the most important thing you could do is figure out which activities lead 
to money in your pocket. Now, if you're starting out, you're like, I don't know. Well, let me make it clear for you. Let me make it very simple for you. Even though every business is slightly different, even online businesses can be slightly different, but every business is slightly different. In reality, moving your business forward and making money comes down to just two things. You ready? Getting leads and making offers. Getting leads and making offers. That's it, man. Everything else that you could do in your business is either in support of those two things or is unnecessary entirely. So the trick is to have the guts to get clear on what those tasks are, which sounds like it should be obvious, but you'd be so surprised how easy it is to slip into the seductive trance of doing pointless stuff because you see everybody else doing it. What am I talking about? I'm talking about doing things that feel good but aren't good or are unnecessary, like getting to inbox zero. Clearing out your inbox does not pay your mortgage, right? Tweaking the colors on the buttons on your website or swapping out your website template or theme so it looks better. It doesn't matter what your website looks like. It's not going to put more money in your pocket. Uh, posting more reels on Instagram, Maybe it feels good. Maybe you see everybody else doing it. Does not put money in your pocket. Chances are very high. Neither of those activities make any difference to your bottom line. You need to know the things that make you money or will drive your business forward or give you a chance to make money and then zero in on those things and do only those things. I am giving you permission to ignore doing 99% of what the rest of the world's doing and just get more leads and make them offers. That's actually going to put money in your pocket. Be effective, not just efficiently doing a hundred million things. Number two, simplify, simplify, simplify. Too many people overcomplicate business. I'm very fortunate in that I'm a simple person by nature. I value simplicity. To me, simplicity is wealth. I want my life to be simple. I want my schedule to be simple. I even manage my finances with simplicity at the heart of all things. I will give up a small percentage of wealth maximization or tax effect or, you know, efficiency. I'll give up a small bit of that if I can have a magnitude greater of simplicity because simplicity is wealth to me. It clears my mental space and it allows me to have the life I want to have. That translates very well to business when I have very uh, close friends and colleagues who have very complicated businesses and it only leads to more problems. More variables leads to more problems. So the fewer variables you have in your business, the much easier it is to not only show up and continue to do it, but it's easier to scale. For example, years ago in the early stages of my first business, The Recording Revolution, uh, I was, again, groping through the dark, figuring this thing out on my own, had no clue what I was doing, but I stumbled across what was working in my business, and then I started to connect with other online business owners, and I realized two things. One, they knew a lot more about this online business thing than I did. They were learning it from someone somehow. And two, they were doing a lot more things than I was doing. And I was counseled by them to get with the program and do what they were doing, which involved doing uh, more live launches. Everything I was doing was on autopilot. It was evergreen at the time. Um, They counseled me to split test, split test your sales pages and your headlines. Like, why aren't you testing everything? Split test, split test, split test to know which performs better than the other so I can increase my conversion rate. And then they were all driving paid traffic to auto webinars in order to grow their business. And they're telling me I needed to do the same thing. Now, full disclosure, not, none of these strategies are bad in of themselves, but they were just distractions to me. And I said, you know what? That sounds great, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bet on my stupid simplicity and just keep my head down. And I'm going to keep doing the actions that were making me money. You know what those were? Pretty simple. Three core actions, making weekly blog and YouTube content, growing my email list, and promoting new products to that list. Weekly blogging and YouTube content, growing my email list from that content, and promoting new products to that list. I have rinsed and repeated that formula like shampoo through your hair for years and years, and that eventually led to me hitting my first million-dollar year back in 2018. Um, I believe that the best businesses are the simplest ones. I really, really do. And that's why I wrote about it in my book, How to Get Paid for What You Know. If you haven't read it, 
It's the, it's the most affordable training I offer. You should pick up a copy. It's like 20 bucks on Amazon, how to get paid for what you know, or do the audible version. If you listen to books, um, that's the model I taught in that book, because I believe it's the one that if you're starting out and if you haven't had success in business, or even if you have, and you want a more simplified, automated life-giving business, that's the model. That's what I teach it. If you're starting out the most powerful thing and simple thing you could do is to begin creating content online, creating a presence online around your topic and niche. Even if it's not perfect, even if it's not ideal, you can iterate as you go. That's what we're all doing anyway, but just start showing up online, creating that content and building that audience you can build from there. Number three, this, this one is huge. I wanted to start with this one, but it's not as juicy, um, but it's the thing that you're going to appreciate if you do this work now, day one versus day a thousand. And that is very simple. You need to get clear on the business you want, the business you want. For some reason, most new business owners are only clear on one thing. You want to guess what that is? How much money they want to make. That's it. Most people are like, I want to make or I need to make, same thing. They're very clear on how much they want to make, whether it's a monthly amount, I want to make $10,000 a month, or it's an annual amount, whatever, however you, you, you look at it, that's the only thing the majority of my, my clients are clear on. Graham, help me make this per month. And I love that. It's a great starting point, but it's wildly incomplete. Think about the fact that there are many, many ways to make money, lots of money. But if that's all it is, let's track that out. Lots of money and success in business actually isn't a success if it comes at the expense of hating what you do. You hate what you do or you have no time to enjoy the money. So making your money goal or hitting your money goal can't be all you're clear on because it won't satisfy if you get trapped into a business. And that's what happens a lot of times. I have this saying, I write about it in the book. I say it a lot. I believe that your business should serve your life, not the other way around. The last thing you want to do is build a successful business, quote unquote, successful business that you are now a servant to and you hate it. Because then you've built a trap. It's hard to walk away from money so building a successful financial business that you then hate or is soul sucking or is time sucking, it's almost worse than starting at zero because it's very hard for people to walk away from that kind of money. So it's critical to have a business model that aligns with your goals, aligns with your lifestyle, your ideal lifestyle. Um, and then once you have that mapped out, you can grow it to reach your income goals which is a win-win. So what I've done is I've, I've put together three questions that I want you to actually answer to help you get clear on the type of business you want. So you can either answer these now on the fly, you can pause this and answer them or just write them down and take some time later today or tomorrow to think them through. Question number one, what does your perfect work day look like? What does your perfect work day look like? So draw it up, envision when would you wake up? What would you do first, second, third in the morning? What time would you settle into work? Where would you be working? Um, when do you want to wrap up for the day? And, and then include all the outside of business things, the other life activities that are important to you that you would want to pepper in through the day, like exercise or um, taking your kids to school or picking them up or just time with family or I like to be outside, going for a walk outside or sitting out on the dock at my house, whatever it is, right? Pepper those things in and just map out what's the ideal work day. Don't worry about how possible it is right now. Just envision the ideal work day for you. Number two, answer this question. How many hours do you want to work per week? <laughs> Most people don't stop to think about this and, and realize that they choose. You get to choose how many hours you want to work. If you don't believe that, then you are living in a victim mindset of, oh, I have to work a certain number of hours, or you just assume it should be 40 to 80 hours because that's what other people do. It's all made up, my friend. It's really up to you. My business takes me five hours a week now. Five hours a week. If, if I told myself that 13 years ago, 
that I could make millions of dollars working five hours a week. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have made any sense to me, but it doesn't matter if you don't know how yet. What matters is that the reality is you choose how many hours you work. So make that choice. Otherwise it will choose for you. And Parkinson's law will tell you that it's going to just fill up, fill up, fill up. Your work will continue to expand. There's unlimited things I could be doing, my friend. I just have chosen how many hours I want to work and then everything has to fit around that. So part of your perfect day that you outlined previously or that you hopefully will envision involves time to do things other than your work. So you're going to need a business model that supports that vision. So for example, think about this. This is important. Um, a lot of you want to do one-on-one coaching. And I've, I've done one-on-one coaching for many, many years. And it's a powerful thing. And it's a great way to make money quickly if you don't have a big audience yet. I teach this in my course. But one-on-one coaching as a business model, it's, it's eventually going to plateau for you because your time sensitive with that work. It's tied to the hours you put in. It's not a very scalable business. So you just need to keep that in mind. That's the only thing you're going to do or the only thing you're going to offer. You might not have time to do the other things you want to do unless you charge a major premium and you can still reach your income goals with fewer clients at that premium. Just keep all that in mind. How many hours do you want to work per week? And finally, number three question to ask to build the business that you actually want or get clear in the business you actually want is this is, I've learned to ask this question because I used to assume an answer to this question, but I've learned that's not always true. Answer this. How important is it to you to be able to disappear for weeks at a time and still generate income? Some people I've learned don't, they don't care too much about taking time off as long as they're, they're doing work they love and their work week and schedule is sustainable. If you're working 80 hours a week, you're going to burn out and you will need time off or you will long for time off. But I've learned that some people, they don't, they don't really care about taking vacation or, or going places. They really are, are happy to keep working as long as they are working in the work they care about and are passionate about and they are living the ideal work day and ideal work week for them as defined in question one, envisioning that ideal work day. Others, like myself, I love to travel. I love to take extended time off with my wife and kids. I like unplugging for weeks, months at a time even. Like this summer in July, I took the month of July off. Three of those weeks, we were in another country. I I like moments like that to like flush the system, the brain, get inspiration, do other things that are not business related so that I come back with way more ideas, way more innovation and clarity. I need to leave to come back to see things with a fresh perspective. So in order for me to do that or for you to do that and have money still flowing in when you're not working, you're going to need a a business model that is at least partially passive, if not fully passive. Kind of going back to the one-on-one coaching model, you have to think about these things. I would rather you map this out, these three questions in advance, before you work hard to build a business. That way you will make certain decisions that other people wouldn't make, but they're gonna suit your lifestyle. You will be building a profitable business because any business can be profitable. You'll be building a profitable business that suits your lifestyle. So start with those lifestyle goals and then build the business around that. And fourth and finally, most important thing to be thinking about as you're kicking off your business journey in these first 30 days and beyond is to have fun. You gotta have fun. To put it bluntly, if you're not having fun, your business is doomed. If you're having fun for a few years and then it becomes unfun, something needs to change. Your business is doomed. I don't know where you are in your journey. You might be five years into a business and it's no longer fun like it once was. That's a red flag. That's just a warning light on your dashboard of your car. You don't need to panic, but you need to pay attention. Why is it not fun? Something needs to change. Why is fun important? Well, I want to speak to the the online space in particular because that's the kind of business we're building. Um, Honestly, people can tell when you're just doing things for the money. They can tell. They can also tell when you genuinely love what you're doing. Um. You might be 
really good on camera, or you may, might be a really persuasive writer or a fantastic podcaster, and you can fake it for a little bit. But eventually people can tell. Um, there is a difference when you authentically love what you're doing and believe in what you're doing versus when you're just knowledgeable and skillful and can communicate something, but you're just doing it to keep the beast flowing. This was a huge thing for me with my first business, The Recording Revolution, right? I started in 2009 and 2018, I knew I needed to, to create another avenue to start talking about business because I loved business. I had this new love that grew. So I launched this brand in 2018 to, to more formally coach people. I was coaching people privately for a couple of years in their online businesses, but I wanted an outlet to write about, speak about, make videos on, build products around this stuff. And it was just a creative outlet. What I learned the first two years into this business of running the two businesses side by side was, whoa, I really love talking about business and helping people reach their lifestyle goals and dreams. And I'm, I'm less and less enjoying talking about music production. And that scared me because I've always been the music guy. But I finally got honest with myself and said, I don't love this anymore. And if I don't love it anymore, I can't in good faith keep making videos about this. It's disingenuous. Most people wouldn't have noticed early on because I could talk about music recording in my sleep and it's helping people. And that's satisfying in its own way, but my heart wasn't in it. So I made the hard decision to pull out of my business and have my, my marketing guy step into a more partner role and start managing other content creators and get other faces in there um, because I couldn't do it. In the last two years, that's what it's been. It's been other content creators. And people were disappointed. And heck, I was disappointed, but it was the right thing to do because I wasn't authentically excited about business, uh, music recording and the, the, the gear and the new strategies, but my audience is, and they need someone who's authentically all about it and just as passionate about it as they are. And there's other people who are. I no longer am. So that's why I stepped out from that to focus on this, which I'm passionate about. And the reason I'm able to sell so much product and, and have such incredible super fans like many of you are is because I'm authentic. That's one of the number one things I hear, right? It, what you see is what you get. Like, this is me. I genuinely want you to succeed. And I'm going to tell you the truth about what's been working for 13 years, what's worked then, what's continued to work now, what no longer works. I'm doing it actively myself. This is not theory. This is real-time data. So uh, it's the same for you. The, if you love what you do and you're having fun, that authenticity is going to connect you with your audience in a way that will, they will buy anything you sell. Because why? They trust you. They know you. That's huge. It's intangible. It's not the same as split testing sales copy, but trust, loyalty, authenticity, that bond, that converts more sales than anything. And it's going to sustain you for the long haul if you love what you're doing. This is so important. If you look, I was thinking about this, if you look at any successful business, any successful person, whether it's a business owner or a celebrity, whatever it is, you quickly realize that they've been at this for years, if not decades. There's no overnight success, okay? Every overnight success took at least 10 years. The only way to win the game is to play the game long enough. Just stay in the game. That's how you win. You don't, very rarely do you win in year one. Some people do. It's, that's not me. But I have seen time and time again, I've coached thousands of entrepreneurs and I've run two online businesses myself. Uh, the, the way to win is simple. Keep playing the game. Your chances of winning go up and up every year you stay in this game. So you got to stay in the game. And guess what? That won't happen if you burn out. And if you don't love what you're doing, you're going to burn out. You, you can plow through it, fake it for a while. You will burn out. So the goal is to not burn out. How do you not burn out? Have fun. And if it's not fun, you need to stop. Get honest, brutally honest with yourself. It's okay. You don't have to be honest with people publicly, but get honest with yourself. Why is it not fun? What would make it fun? What used to be fun about it if it was fun at one point? You're, you might be changing. The business might be the same as it was, but your desires might be changing. You're in a different season maybe now. Maybe you've got different goals. That's okay. There's nothing wrong. We're, we're always moving and changing and developing and growing as humans. We're never static. So what's changed and what do you have to do? Do whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes 
to continue to enjoy what you do. Otherwise, you're not going to be successful and you're going to burn out. This might be helpful as we wrap that, that part up is I always give my students this framework um, when they're beginning their entrepreneurial journey. Don't build a business around something that you couldn't see yourself doing for the next 10 years. Don't think about the next year or the next two years. You can do anything for a year or two. We've all been there. We've endured jobs that are hard or seasons of business that are hard for a year or two. That's not a good enough measure of whether it's the right business for you. Imagine talking about this topic, teaching about this thing, coaching people around this idea for the next 10 years. What comes to mind? If you go, whoa, that sounds exhausting. It's probably not the business for you. But if you're like, I freaking love this. And if I can get paid great money to talk about this stuff for the next decade, sign me the heck up. Then you're on the right track. These four things, understanding the difference between efficiency and effectiveness, like knowing the things that are actually going to drive your business forward, simplifying the crap out of your business, getting clear on the business that you want, which really is tied to the life that you want, and then having fun. Answering these questions, doing this deep thought work is the most important thing you could be doing in the first 30 days of your business. And if you're in the middle of your business, this is the most important thing you could be doing this week. Just pause everything. We're going into the new year here soon. Pause everything and and work out those questions as you go into the new year. It's a great refresh. It's a great reset. We all get off track. I do this kind of work every December. Why? Because everything's always changing. My business is changing. My life is changing. My heart, my desire is changing. And it's, it's a getting the pulse on yourself and your business. So this is great work to be doing even 10 years into your business. Look, I'm 13 years into online business and I'm answering and asking these questions every single year. So whether it's year one or year 13, this is a great framework for you. And if you need help specifically on zero idea to how do I make money, Graham, and I want to do it quickly, well, I've got a 30-day plan for you. It works. It's not going to be millions of dollars. I won't promise you that, but it'll be hundreds, and it's going to teach you a lot, and you're going to be excited about building a framework of a business that you can really build off of. It's my 30-day online income jumpstart guide. Just grab it for free below if you're watching on YouTube or go to grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart if you're listening to the podcast version of this. Hey, thanks for hanging with me. Let me know if this was helpful. Let me know what stood out to you from today's episode. Leave a comment below. It always informs me of what's sticking and what's resonating with you. And if I haven't already wished you, have a happy Thanksgiving to all of my US friends. Enjoy time with family. Enjoy some time off and start thinking about how you can reframe business next year so that it really supports you to have the time and the life and the lifestyle that you want. I'm thankful for you. We'll see you next week.